Are politics ruining your friendship? Is there any way to keep this from happening, especially when some of the divides are so big? And also, how do you know when you should just walk away? But today, I'm gonna to offer three tips on how you can prevent politics from ruining your friendship. And stay to the end when I'll talk about how to decide when you should walk away from a friendship because it's just too toxic. So we've all heard the stories of friendships falling apart over political differences, even friendships that have lasted for decades. And in fact, I have seen this happen to people in my own life where friendships either blew up entirely because of a fight or slowly faded because there was just a sense that the differences were too big and it was too hard to find common points of connection. But these results are not inevitable. In fact, we can, and I would just say it's healthy to have friendship across lines of political difference. I have all sorts of friends on opposite sides of the political spectrum, and a non-trivial part of my own professional life is working with people across these lines of political difference. So let me begin by starting with tip number one which is really internal work. And it's building your own skills of conflict resilience. So when I say conflict resilience, what do I mean? Conflict resilience is your own ability to sit with discomfort in the face of different views. And when I say sit with discomfort, I mean an ability to listen actively and generously when People are speaking in ways that are highly different from your own thinking. It also, though, means being able to speak assertively and confidently about how you see the world with those who see it quite differently from you. So conflict resilience is really different from problem solving. It means just being comfortable with the discomfort of conflict. And that may sound simple, but in my own view, it is a quality that is disappearing in our society right now because at the least bit of conflict, we can cancel somebody, we can unfriend them, we can block them, we can make sure we never talk to them again or we completely avoid the areas of difference. And that is a real problem. A sign of a good friendship is a friendship where we actually don't see eye to eye on everything. In fact, we see very differently on some issues, and yet our relationship remains strong. But that means a lot of internal work. Second, if possible, make the political differences actually part of your fun. Okay, now you may think, this guy is nuts. So what do I mean by that? Well, for me, it's actually acknowledging that we don't have the same view on LGBTQ rights, or we don't have the same view on tax policy, or on who should be the governor, or the mayor, or the president. And that can be a source of some fun. It could be something that we can spar about if that's the way our friendship is. Or it could be something that we engage as a really hard, but kind of enjoyable conversation. So in other words, taking some of the emotional fraughtness away and being explicit about the difference kind of eases some of the tension. So in some sense, it's not making that moment of difference the heart of the relationship or the sense that here's where our relationship is going to fall apart. Now, in some cases, it's simply too hard to make the political difference part of the fun. And so when that's not possible, it can be helpful to come to some common terms on both the when and the how of a political conversation. So in other words, it's basically saying to your friend, hey, there are some differences we have here that when they come up, one or both of us find them really triggering. And even though we are conflict resilient, um, this cuts to the bone a little bit too closely 
And so we should have some agreed upon rules about whether we're going to engage this and when. So what might that look like? Well, sometimes you might just say, hey, let's just not talk about this ever. But I actually think that's an extreme view. Sometimes you might say, hey, let's agree that if there's some political conversation, let's say the election is coming up and it's really important for me to have a conversation with you about why I'm voting for X and not Y, that we will carve out some special time for the conversation, that we will agree to be respectful around our differences, that we will ask a lot of questions, and that when the conversation comes to a close, we'll move on with our friendship. So another way of thinking about this, especially for those of you who've been watching my channel, it's negotiating the process around which politics will be part of your friendship. And sometimes if you can't have fun with those political differences, but you don't want to drop them entirely, setting some process rules about when and how can be a useful way to keep the differences part of the friendship, but also not let that leak out into the whole friendship. Let me give you an example of a coaching context where I coach one of my clients to have a difficult conversation with her friend around the rules of engagement around political difference. So long story much shorter, my client was somebody who has very liberal politics. And her best friend from high school, who she loved dearly, would often needle her about what the friend thought was quite extreme political views. But below the surface, my client would often leave that needling feeling personally hurt, disrespected, and really questioning the friendship. And so what I coached my client to do is to have a conversation with her friend about the experience of these occasional jabs and needles. And this ended up being an incredibly productive conversation where they agreed that the needling would stop because the intention behind the needling was really not to be hurtful. Uh, I think it was sometimes to um, say, hey, you're extreme and you're extreme, but it wasn't to be hurtful. And so what ended up happening is these two people came to an agreement that they wouldn't do this occasional needling, but at times would really sit down for a heart-to-heart -heart around political differences. Now, that is a dream good outcome. Sometimes, however, given how fractious our politics are and given sometimes how emotional it can be, and sometimes a political issue for one person is a deeply personal issue for the others. And so if you have a friend who's actually not respecting your boundaries on this, then it may be time to say goodbye. So how do I make that decision? Well, first, I think it's always worth trying to have a conversation, such as the one my client had with her friend, about how the experience has been for you of not feeling respected around boundaries or limits. And then a conversation about how can we establish a process or some ground rules about the when and how of political conversation. But at the end of the day, if your friend is not respecting that and continues to needle you or disrespect you or impose upon you in ways that are keeping you up at night, that are making you feel hurt or shut down, that's a time to end the friendship. So the point here is simply that we have to have some conflict resilience if our friendships with those who disagree with us are to survive. Simply saying, as soon as we disagree, the friendship is at risk, will probably make it really hard to retain a friendship in the face of political differences. On the other hand, if you can find a way to make political conversation part of your fun, that is really healthy. And if you can't do that, try as much as you can to set some ground rules about the when and how you will talk politics. And lastly, if none of these work, really consider whether this is a healthy friendship for you. So if you want to learn how you can actually have that difficult conversation with a friend, stay tuned here and watch the next video which is how to start a difficult conversation with a friend. Okay, keep watching. Click, click.